He wants to explain the idea of the electric field. So let's take, for instance, a region of space where we put a charge Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, several charges, could be many different charges, and these are charges are fixed in space. And in this example, we put a conductor, and the conductor, it, we put some extra charge on the conductor. And this negative charge represents the extra charge on the conductor. And then we want to go to a point P in space, and we want to try and see what the effect of all these charges are at that point in space. So this point P is empty. I just put a point here so you can see it, but there's nothing at that point in space. It's completely empty. Now, just one point to mention about the charges on a conductor, we're going to take in detail later on that when you put extra charge on a conductor, the charge goes to the surface. And the charge could move on the surface depending on the other charges that are available in the problem. So if you move these charges around or if you put a charge here anywhere, then the charges on the surface could change their orientation. So this particular orientation is the orientation due to the presence of these charges in space at that point in time. So if you want to measure the electric field at point P, what we do is we bring a positive test charge. You bring this charge from your own, you bring it yourself. It has nothing to do with these charges that are here. You bring some charge called a test charge, you know what its value is, and you put it at that point P in space. Now, when you put a charge at this point in space, Q, it'll experience a force, FQ. And just to make sure, we need to put this charge Q, the value of it, such that the charges on the conductor don't change their orientation, don't change the location due to the presence of this charge. These charges are fixed. They're not gonna change when you bring this charge Q and you put it at point P, but the charges on the conductor are free to move in principle as long as they stay on the conductor. So by bringing this charge Q, it could change the, the organization of the charges on the, on the surface of the conductor. Now we need to prevent that from happening because if that happens, you'll be measuring something other than what you wanted to measure. And we'll discuss this in detail in a bit. So you have to put, when you put the charge Q, you make sure that the charge you bring doesn't affect the charge distribution that exists in any way. For instance, if you put the charge Q very large, then the orientation of the charges along the, on the surface of the conductor can change. So now, actually, the charges that you're trying to find their effect at point P are not the same charges as they were in the original problem, because the orientation of the charges here is different than it was before. So that means that you have to bring the charge Q a very small charge. It can't affect anything that's happening in the original problem. So then, by definition, the electric field then at this location, this point P in space, it's the force that you measure divided by the charge that you bring. And in this case, the charge is a positive charge, so we can write it as plus magnitude of Q. And you just have to add a comment to this equation that the charge Q, by definition, has to be so small that it doesn't change the charge distribution, the original charge distribution in the system. So that what you're, with the field that you're measuring is be, or you're calculating is due to the charges that you have in the original problem. And since the electric field vector is the force divided by the charge and the charge is positive, that means the direction of the electric field vector is the same direction as the force vector, but it just differs in magnitude by dividing by the charge. So now we can actually remove this test charge from this point in space and we have now an empty point in space, but we can associate with that point in space a vector called the electric field vector, the total electric field at that point. So this vector represents the effect of all these charges in space. And of course, the electric field vector exists at every single point in space, not just one point. For instance, this point, this point, this point, there are vectors associated with every one of those points, and they're not just these three points. Every single point in space is associated with it, a value, a vector, which is the electric field vector at that point.